Hi there, this, uh, this message is called Justification by Faith. I'm Andrew Shreve, and uh, let us pray and ask the blessing of God upon our teaching today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, that your Word is truth. Lord, we pray as we study the book of Galatians and we look at justification by faith, Lord, that you will open the eyes of our understanding, that we can have revelation, understanding, Lord, of, of what you've done for us through Jesus Christ that we have been made right with you. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, I've just uh, studied the book of Galatians today and read through the whole book and I thought that I would share with you this uh, concept or this truth of being justified by faith, which is what Paul is uh, making very, very clear in this letter. And so I'm going to pick out a few different verses uh, for us to look at. Um, a bit of a sort of overview of the book of Galatians. In chapter 1, in verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So Paul's saying that, that he's amazed that you, could be, that you could be removed from, and he calls it the grace of Christ. And so here in, in one word, one verse, if you like, Paul is encapsulating the, the gospel. Of Jesus Christ and he's calling it the grace of Christ so grace uh, you know has various meanings but it basically means God's God's favor to us it means unmerited favor we didn't deserve it it means God's power God's ability uh, coming into our into our life and so the gospel is all about what God has done for us it's not about our works or our law or what we've done it's what God has done through Christ for us and we simply the receivers by faith of what God has done. And so that phrase there, he calls it the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So if, if you're hearing a gospel and it's not the grace of Christ, it's not God's power in you, then that's not the true gospel. If, you, if you're hearing a gospel that's about works, legalism, law, you have to do this, you have to do that, that's not the true gospel. The true gospel is the grace of Christ. It's God's power in you, assisting you and helping you to be free from sin, free from sickness, free from poverty, free from the, 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 the tragedy that struck this planet. Okay. Then if we look down into verse 16, chapter 1, it says, uh, Paul's saying, saying that God separated him from his mother's womb to reveal his son in me. And so he's saying that God separated him to reveal the son of God, Jesus Christ, in Paul. And so another aspect of the gospel, central to the gospel, is Jesus Christ being revealed in us. We need to have the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what, that's what God, uh, Jesus said to Peter, whom, whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to Peter, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And so... The true revelation of Jesus Christ is, is what the gospel is all about. And, and it's having the revelation that Jesus is our righteousness, that Jesus is our strength, that Jesus is our all in all. Hallelujah. It's centered on Jesus. If you're hearing a gospel that's not centered on Jesus Christ, that's centered on, on, on something else, the law of the Old Testament even, that's not the true gospel. The true gospel is always centered on, on Jesus Christ, what He has done, the work of Christ. And we just receive that by faith. Then if we look now into chapter 2 and verse 4, Paul says, And that false brethren, false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. And so the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of liberty. Hallelujah. It's liberty. If you're, feeling in, if you're feeling put into bondage, restriction, law, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God in you, liberating you to be free from sin. It's walking by faith in that grace of God, in that power of God. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not, it's not you having to, to do certain things based on your mental power or ability or your willpower to obey law. That's not the gospel. The gospel is, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Christ's power. It's the revelation of Christ flowing through you and giving you the ability 
through by him giving you the ability to walk free from sin and to accept all that God has done for you all the promises of God in Christ Jesus and then if we look down in Genesis, uh, Galatians 2 verse 16 we see a quite a famous uh, verse it says knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law okay a man if, no man can be justified by the works of the law doesn't matter what your religion is if you're trying to be right with God through law through, through saying your prayers so many times a day or going on a pilgrimage or or uh, giving to the poor or doing good deeds or whatever. If you're trying to merit God's favor through law, that's not the truth. That is not the truth. That's not God's way. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We Justification is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Look down in chapter 2 and verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. When we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour, we died with Him, we buried with Him, we're resurrected with Him, we're ascended with Him. Our identity is in Christ. And that identity that we have in Christ is an identity of righteousness. It's an identity of victory. It's an identity of authority. And so it's as we have that identity in Christ, as we are one with Christ, that we have victory in this life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness and disease. Victory over poverty. That's our justification. Jesus is our justification. We are not our own justification. It's not my good works that makes me acceptable to God. It is the work that Jesus did and my acceptance of that work by faith. That's what causes me to be righteous. Verse 21 of chapter 2 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if we could make ourselves righteous by doing the law, by obeying the law, then there's no need for Christ to come, was there? The whole reason that Christ came was that we could not make ourselves righteous. We could not justify ourselves. Christ had to come and take away our sins with His blood so that we then could, by faith, receive Christ and be justified by faith. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Look at uh, chapter 3, verse 2. It says, this only would I learn of you. Received you the Spirit by the works of law or by the hearing of faith. Obviously, they received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They became the temple of God through the hearing of faith, not by law. Verse 3 says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? A lot of Christians, they receive, they get born again, they receive Jesus Christ by faith, they, and then they think they can perfect the Christian life through the works of law. In other words, try, trying to be obedient and all these things. That is not the way you perfect yourself. You perfect yourself. You're born again by faith in the Spirit. Through the Spirit, by faith, you receive Christ. You perfect yourself the same way. You take hold of the Word of God. You take hold of the promise of God. You believe it by faith. You walk by faith. As you walk by faith, the grace of God comes. The power of God comes, the ability of God comes and enables you to be free from sin and to walk with Christ. Hallelujah. We are justified by faith. Praise God. Let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the listeners, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the blessing of God to come upon them, for the anointing of God. Lord, that they would have revelation that they can be justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, Lord, as they hold on to the Word of God by faith, that that's all you require of them. That's what justifies them. That's what makes them right with you. That's what declares them innocent. That's what removes their guilt. Hallelujah. And they will spend eternity with you. Bless you. I love you. Go to my website, andrewshreve.org, and there's lots of teaching there that will bless you. I love you. Bye.